Okay, so I'm Claire, the um, librarian at the Department of Chemistry here in Cambridge. Um, and I'm going to be talking to you about how I've been collaborating with the Office of Scholarly Communication here at Cambridge and um, my own researchers to engage chemists in good data management. Um, so chemistry is one of the largest departments in the university. We've got 200 postdocs, 300 graduate students and about 50 academic staff. Um, all producing research outputs, including about 500 journal articles in a year. Um, so the research in the department is grouped around uh, five research interest groups, oops, or RIGs. Um, so biological, materials, physical, synthetic, and theory. Uh, and the idea is, is that a PI will be a member of at least two of these RIGs to encourage um, interdisciplinary research within chemistry and you can kind of see how they do overlap together. Um, so we generate a huge volume of data as well as a wide variety of types of data. So from raw instrument readings to genomic stuff to uh, code and software. So quite a wide variety. Um, the library is um, embedded in the department, so therefore it's discipline specific. And we, amongst many other things, um, support open research in the department. So when I joined in 2013, at that time, um, researchers were having to think much more hard about uh, how to make their um, research comply with open data and open access mandates. Um, and they needed a lot of support with this, so centrally and locally. Um, so centrally, the Office of Scholarly Communication, OSC, uh, was established in uh, 2015, and they're based at the University Library here. Um, and they provide central RDM things. So uh, they've got an RDM website, they manage the repository, um, they do uh, data management plans, support, uh, and training on RDM as well. Um, so I could see early on that it was gonna be really important for me to um, collaborate with them in getting their central messages across to my own researchers. So one of the main things we've been doing is RDM training for graduate students. Um, this is an example of um, a slide from a presentation that the OSC put together as a template that can be adapted by departments for use. Um, so this is just describing what we do in the session. Uh, and this is how I've customized it a bit for chemistry. So showing a paper written by some of our researchers and how the data has been uploaded to the repository um, so they can be selfish about sharing, as we've already talked about, and um, for the benefit of everyone else. Another thing I've done is um, posted open data FAQs for chemists on our library open data website. Um, and these derive from information sessions that the OSC did in our department. Um, and always one of the first questions is, well, what is it that I'm supposed to share? What would my chemistry paper particularly look like? Um, so that's aiming to address that. Sergio. <laughs> um, I've been involved in the Data Champions Programme at Cambridge um, since it began. Um, and I mentor three uh, Data Champions in, in our department. Sergio is one. Um, and I kind of did a data needs a training needs analysis with them to see what um, kind of gaps they thought there were in RDM provision in the department and how we could um, address those. So they came up with a few ideas um, and I've put this on the library's open data website which is a protocol for converting proprietary files into open ones. So for example from a nuclear magnetic resonance machine it uses um, Topspin software, which is a proprietary software in its outputs. So uh, this is just a brief instruction for how to make that into an open file format that can be easily shared when it comes to that point of sharing your data and um, just encourages good practice and they're not reinventing the wheel each time. Um, GitHub. Uh, GitHub is used by researchers in the department, uh, our computational chemists who are doing um, uh, coding and making software, um, but also uh, 
Sergio did um, this introduction to GitHub, GitHub session, which covered you know how you can use GitHub to manage all of your research openly um, and other benefits of it, and that was well attended and um, well received. So, in terms of benefits for the department and the library, um, we've encouraged best practice through all the training that I've done. Um, the library role in the department's been enhanced because we're the first point of contact now for everything that's open research when they have a problem, basically, um, come to me. Uh, but I can also call upon the OSC for support with that as well. Um, and it's really good for researchers to have experts based in the department. I, as a librarian, will know the basic you know, principles of RDM but I can't give any advice really about a particular chemistry data type because I, I just don't have that knowledge. Um, so in terms of benefits for the um, OSC, they get a reduction in their workload for training, but they're still getting their messages across about RDM. Um, and the data champions operate in discipline-specific areas that they can't, OSC can't necessarily get to. Um, so in summary, I've built up you know, strong, good working relationships with the OSC, with my own researchers and the data champions. Um, and there will always be you know, barriers to success with RDM you know, due to researcher apathy or sheer lack of time that researchers think they have for doing RDM. Um, but you know, we just need to continue to keep working together to come up with good ideas for how we can make it easy for them to engage with RDM and data management. Okay, that's all I have to say. We Thank have you. Three minutes left for questions. Ooh, seven minutes. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> yep. Um, so you proactively go to maybe lab and say they have a research activity and you come out and say this is the format and uh, or are you waiting for it to come and come out? Um, that idea came from one particular, um, he was a PhD student. Um, in a lab who did this all the time. So, and he, he said, I keep having to do this every time and then people are coming up to me asking me how to do this. So he said, this would be a good idea. And we've only got that one at the moment, but we in, in Sergio and um, Quentin, who are another data champion, are gonna be sending out a survey across the department to try and get more information on this, about what proprietary files they're using, how to convert them, and then just keep compiling that page, hopefully. So we are kind of. Yeah. To what? See. To go in each lab and say, hey, do you know that you can do this? And this is this part. Yeah. Well, this is our way of hopefully sharing the data, isn't it? Yeah. The information. But I guess the challenge is like in a department that has 500, 600 people, and maybe it's only two or three of us yeah. working. <laughs> it's a challenge. No sleep. <laughs> I mean, we could, we could, I mean, we've discussed about with other things that we, it's probably good if we could just go into people's group meetings and, and do that. Um, so it may be that we start doing that, but it's really time intensive. Um, so we'll see how practical that is. But we'll try the survey to start with. Uh, yeah. So chemistry is obviously being characterised as a very notorious sort of thing. <laughs> Yeah, they, I, mean, I don't want to stereotype, but the early career researchers seem to be much more amenable to sharing and don't see it as a, a barrier. The more established career uh, researchers have always been used to doing it in a certain way and they're not so, they're, they have more concerns about being scooped in their IP and everything else. But I think, I think it will take a while to just get through the whole department and then I get through uh, 75 students um, in the graduate education program every year with the graduate training. So we're hoping that will filter through if they're gonna be the future postdocs, the future PIs, hopefully they'll see the benefit of it. Just to my idea, the, the push is coming mainly from the computational part of chemistry. Mm. Yeah, computational chemistry and mathematics are the ones who are just moving things forward. And in fact, we have a senior group leader, uh, Peter Mather, that's mm -hmm. it's gonna be the yeah. open <laughs> Principles and yeah. so it's going to yeah. 
on that note, let the old cousin fly. Um, <laughs>